Hey everyone, Crow back again. And around June of last year, that would be 2022, I received an email from the developer of Roxy Raccoon's Pinball Panic that was basically saying they would appreciate it if I took a look at the game and if I wouldn't mind giving my thoughts on it. They did provide a code for the game on Steam, and I responded back thanking them for the code and explained that I would like to take a look at the game. I mean, it is pinball related after all, but I don't think I'll be able to look at it anytime soon. At the time, I was knee deep in Evercade stuff, and I also believe that around the same time was when the new pinball effects had just gone into early access. They responded back very understanding and basically said it wasn't a problem. And in fact, if I did check it out in the future, the game would likely be bigger and better than it currently was at that time. And you know something? This certainly was no lie. Now, Roxy Raccoon's Pinball Panic was originally released on Steam by Cinemod Studios in March of 2022 for a standard price of $4.99 US. And as of the making of this video, there have been seven DLC packs ranging in price from $0.99 cents to $1.99, as well as regular updates, with the most recent one being on January 20th. So yes, the game has been regularly updated since its release, and it's not even considered to be an early access. So with that being said, it's possible that the details in this video may be slightly outdated by the time you see this if updates continue. Now I'm going to focus on the base game here, but I did purchase one of the DLC packs just to see what would be added if I did. And if you're thinking, hey, if this is a pinball game, shouldn't this be on your pinball channel? And yeah, I suppose I could have put this video there, but I decided to keep that channel dedicated to games like Pinball FX and Zachria Pinball. In this game, there's a story mode, and the ball itself is the main character, Roxy Raccoon, and you play through a series of theme tables attempting to surpass a set score in order to continue the story and move on to the next table. And the story? Well, you know, something about a witch getting revenge on Roxy Raccoon, something like that. I was kind of unclear about what was going on, but that's not really important to the game itself. I wonder if it would have made more sense if I played the original game. Oh yeah, I didn't mention that this is the second in a series of games featuring Roxy Raccoon, the first one simply being called Roxy Raccoon. However, that seems to be a 3D platformer, and it does seem pretty interesting, so I might wind up checking that out one day as well. There's also a bowling game in the series, and that's another one I'm kind of interested in. But because this is a pinball game that's a spin-off of a main game that wasn't in that genre, you might think that, hmm, maybe this pinball game won't be too good. But you know what? It isn't bad for what it is. There are nine tables total included in the base game. Well, I think there are eight originally, and then a bowling themed table was added post-launch. However, some of the tables are pretty simplistic, and you could tell the game isn't really going through super accurate physics, but it's certainly playable, and there's nothing frustrating about it. I just had to get used to not attempting any dead flipper passes, because the ball will not bounce the way I would expect it to in a game like Pinball FX. But for the most part, the ball, aka Roxy, it doesn't react questionably. I will add in that the sound effects for the pop bumpers and the flippers are really well done. The one thing that's a little strange is in the story mode, if you meet the score you need to proceed, the game just keeps going. I know that some people may want to finish out the game they're playing, but some of the tables are so simple that the game can last forever, and sometimes I would just want to continue on to the next table. So I kind of wish there was something a little bit more noticeable to indicate you can stop playing the current table and move on if you want to. As you play through the story mode, each of the tables open up to be played in a variety of different modes, such as a standard game, or a mode to see how high of a score you can get within a certain time limit, or a mode to see how long it takes you to get to a certain score, so there's a few different ways to keep playing the tables after you're done with the story mode. If you've purchased any DLC, the additional tables will be playable in these modes as well. The game allows you to do some customization on some of the characters, but the bulk of it is reserved for Roxy Raccoon. As you complete the score thresholds for each table, you'll unlock more accessory options, and I always like it when you could do these sorts of customizations on your playable character. 
On top of that, there are a bunch of bonus games included in the Ryan's Arcade section, 21 in total, and the potential is there for more to be added in the future. Now, most of these are pinball related, but some of them are not. So it's interesting to see a variety of bonus content here. And to be clear, none of this is DLC. It's all included in the base purchase of the game. The only thing that could really use improving though is the user interface. If you're using a controller to navigate the UI, it can be really difficult to see what's highlighted at times. Also, the footage I'm showcasing here is in a 16-9 aspect ratio, which is what most people would be playing the game at. However, when I started the game for the first time, it defaulted to my standard resolution of 3440 by 1440, which is a 21-9 aspect ratio, and that wouldn't normally be an issue. However, for whatever reason, it didn't really adjust to the screen properly and it just zoomed in and cut off the bottom of the screen image. Now, it's fine if the game doesn't support ultra widescreen, but it's kind of a bad first impression to see the game with a chunk of the screen missing, though it would only really affect people with ultra widescreen monitors. For $4.99 on Steam, I'd say this is worth it. Though I really can't see myself going back and playing most of the nine tables that were included as part of the story mode. I actually found the bonus games in the Ryan's Arcade section to be a bit more interesting. Although now that I think about it, I could see myself revisiting the nine original tables, but only in the timed or survival modes just to keep the game short. The DLC pack I wound up purchasing was the first one that was released for the game, and that was the Ghoulish Games Pack for $1.99, and that included two pinball tables, an extra playable character, and more accessories for Roxy Raccoon. I gotta say that these two tables were a bit more interesting than the original ones, so I actually may go ahead and buy the rest of the DLC packs in the future. The only thing that I was a bit disappointed in was that there weren't any customization options for the new playable character, Tricky Trevor. But you know what? That really isn't that big of a deal. So yeah, just wanted to get this game on your radar and if it looks interesting at $4.99, I'd say it's worth a purchase or at the very least putting on your wish list. I can't say for certain if this game and its DLC goes on sale very frequently, but if it does, I'll definitely snatch up the rest of the DLC right then and there. See y'all next time.